Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph an equation uh, when you have it in standard form. Now, actually, this example is not technically in standard form. However, it's not in slope-intercept form. And basically, maybe I should just say graph an equation when it's not in slope-intercept form. So here we have four different examples. Now, the best thing to do, uh, well, one of the way, I'm actually going to break this video up into two different ways, either showing you how to do it one way and then another way. So when looking into graphing an equation, the first thing that we learned how to do is graph it in slope-intercept form. Basically, you take the equation when it's, for, when it's in y equals mx plus b form, and you identify the slope, identify the y-intercept, plot the y-intercept, and then use the slope to find another point. Well, that's all fine and dandy when you have an equation that looks like this. y equals mx plus b. m is your slope, b is your y-intercept. Well, the problem is we don't have any of these equations are in slope-intercept form. So the first way I'm going to show you to do it is to put it into that form. So if we want to put this in a slope-intercept form, that means I need to solve for y. Well, how do you get y by itself? Well, right now my y is being multiplied by a negative 6, and it's being added by a 2x, because that x, 2x is positive. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract a 2x on both sides. Therefore, that's going to give me a negative 6y equals, now you cannot subtract uh, two, negative 2x from 12x. So I'm going to write the 2x in front because we always write the x in front of our constant. So that's going to be written as a negative 2x minus 12. Now my y is being multiplied by a negative 6. So to undo multiplying by a negative 6, I'm going to divide by a negative 6. So therefore, y equals, now it's very important to make sure you divide that 6 into both of your terms. So that becomes a negative 2x divided by negative 6. And then minus a negative is a plus or a negative divided by negative is a positive divided by 6. Now, I broke this up just so you can see. These are equivalent. But I want to make sure you understand that you're dividing the negative 6 into both of those. And negative 12 divided by negative 6 becomes positive. So my final answer is y equals this can reduce down to 1 third plus 2. Okay. You could also think of that as x over 3. x over 3 is the same thing as 1 third x. Just make sure you notice that or you recognize that. However, I want to write it like this, so therefore I can say, oh, my m is 1 third and my b is 2. So remember, b represents your y-intercept. So we have slope and y-intercept. Remember, y-intercept is going to be where your graph crosses the y-axis. So I go to the point 2 on my y-axis, positive 2, 1, 2, and I make a nice big dot. OK, now remember, slope is going to be a ratio. Slope is the change in y over the change in x, otherwise also known as rise over run. However, if you look at this, we know that the change in y is going to be 1. So that means, the, that means it's positive 1, so I'm going to go up. And the change in x is positive 3, so I'm going to go to the right 3. So if I go up 1 and over 3, what that is going to do is that's going to take me to my next point on the graph. And all points that are on a graph have these, between them, have the ratio of slope. So I could keep on doing this, but I only need two points to make a line. So I connect my two points, and I graph. And there you have it. Um, OK, let's go and do this one. So this case, let's go ahead and um, do this one is going to be exactly I'm just debating which one to do. Actually, you know what? Let's go and do this one. So this one to put in slope-intercept form. Now you can see my y is being multiplied by 10 and subtracted by 5x. So the first thing we do is add a 5x to both sides. Therefore, now I obtain 10y equals 5x plus 20. Again, divide the 10 into both of them. y equals, that divides the 1. 5x divided by um, 10 can be reduced down to 1 half x. And 20 divided by 10 can be reduced down to positive 2. Oh, wow. <laughs> very, very similar problem. So now I go to my y-intercept, which is up 2. And then my slope is up 1, uh, up 1 over 2. So I'll go, oh, that would have been so much better. <sighs> up 1 over 2. So up 1. Up to up one over two. Okay, so over here now, a lot of times in your a lot of times in your examples, um, ah, I, I'm kind of mad I 
didn't do this one. I should have, but whatever. Um, you already know how to do slope intercept form because really the graph, the point of this video is not really how to do it in slope intercept form. The purpose of this is how to graph it when it's not in slope intercept form. So the first way is to solve for your variable y and then graph it. Y, then once you have it in slope intercept form, you plot the y intercept and then you use the slope triangle to find your next point, connect the points, and graph. And done. However, sometimes though, your the instructions might say, well, hey, find the x and the y intercepts and then graph. Or what is the y intercept? What is the x intercept? And so forth. So in these problems, when you graph it in slope intercept form, we don't a lot of times the graph doesn't have an exact value of what the y intercept is or the x intercept. So it's very, very important for us to understand, well, what do the x and the y intercept represent? So if here's my x-axis and here's my y-axis, remember. Um, when a graph crosses the x axis, or think of these again, the x axis is really just a number line. Right? So you go positive 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Right? It's just a number line. The y axis is also really just a number line, but it's a vertical number line. 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So they're just basically the intersection of a horizontal and a vertical number line. That's really all the x and the y axis are. So when I say the intercept, I'm saying I want to know when a point crosses that x intercept, well, what is the y value? When, a gra when a, something is on the x intercept, if you go over to the y axis, you can see that I've not gone up or down at all. So the y value is going to be 0. So therefore, it would be x comma 0. When you go over to the y intercept, if you say where the graph crosses the y intercept, you can go down to the x axis and see that I have not gone left or right at all when it's on the y axis. So that point is 0, comma y. And the main important thing I want you to understand is, I don't know what these points are. I just chose random points here. Because I want you to understand, when you're finding the x intercept, the y value is 0. When you're finding the y intercept, the x value is 0 of your coordinate point. So that understanding and that thinking is going to become very, very helpful to graph this. Because yes, you can convert to slope intercept form and graph. But if you're not good at converting to slope intercept form, or if the, or if the question says, what are the x and the y intercepts, you're going to want to use this method. So to do that, what I do is I basically do two cases. I say, I write it out, x intercept, y equals 0. And then all I do is rever. <laughs> I didn't even write down the y. <laughs> wherever, so therefore, then wherever there's a y, I replace it with the 0. So in this case, I'll do 3x plus 4 times 0 equals 12. Well, 4 times 0 is 0, so I'm left with 3x is equal to 12. Divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals 4. Or you could write that as the coordinate point, 4 comma 0, because we replaced y with 0, and we solved for x equals 4. So I'd go over to my graph, and I'd go 1, 2, 3, 4. And i make a nice big dot. Then you find the y-intercept. So if y is 0 for the x-intercept, x is equal 0 for the y-intercept. So now, wherever there's an x, I plug in a 0. And then go and solve. Well, 3 times 0 is 0. So I'm left with 4y equals 12. Divide by 4, divide by 4, y equals 3. Or you could write that as the coordinate point 0, comma 3. So now I go to where 0, comma 3 is, which is right there. And then I connect my two points. And I have my graph. Ta-da! So I didn't even have to use slope intercept form. Over here, you're going to do the exact same thing. Let's just do x-intercept y equals 0. So where there's a y right there, so I have eh, I'll be nice to you and I'll keep it. But I don't think you're going to last very long. So I do 1 half x plus 2 times 0 equals negative 2. Again, that goes. So I'm left with 1 half x equals negative 2. Well, if you have a, a variable being multiplied by a fraction, you can multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. 2 over 1 is the same thing as 2. That multiplies to give you 1. Any number multiplied by its reciprocal is going to equal to 1. So I'm x. So it's 1 times x, which is just x. 
x times negative 4. So now I go to negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, make a nice big dot. And then I do my y-intercept. y-intercept, x equals 0. And this is also very nice when you have fractions, because now when doing this, I basically get rid of doing my fraction here. And so therefore, I have 1 half times 0 plus 2y equals negative 2. Well, that goes to 0, so I'm left with 2y equals negative 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2, y equals negative 1. So I go down to negative 1, make a point, and then connect. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph equations when they are not in slope-intercept form. Thanks.